Ladies and gentlemen, family and friends, scholars and dignitaries, welcome to another episode. Welcome to my world. It's a fact that the earth has been inundated with diseases and illnesses for its an entire lifespan, and different species of life have been decimated by different diseases. Today we're struggling with the coronavirus, and it's been a terrible disease. It's infected over 110 million people, leaving over 3 million dead in 223 countries and territories, and who knows what the future will hold for mortality and morbidity with the many variants and mutations we're now seeing. But there are many other pandemics we suffered across the world as well. The Antonine Plague was a pandemic that affected Asia Minor, Egypt, Greece, and Italy, and was brought to Rome by soldiers around 165 AD, and unknowingly, they had spread a disease that would end up killing over 5 million people and decimating the Roman army. The bubonic plague was thought to have killed perhaps half the population of Europe, and the plague of Justinian was an outbreak of the bubonic plague that afflicted the Byzantine Empire and Mediterranean port cities, killing up to 25 million people in 541 AD. The Black Plague from 1346 to 1353 ravaged Europe, Africa, and Asia, with an estimated death toll between 75 and 200 million people. The 1918 influenza epidemic ended up with 25 million deaths in just the first 25 weeks, and with a mortality rate of 10 to 20 percent, it killed up to 50 million people. And there were several cholera epidemics across the globe, and millions died with the different flu epidemics like the Asiatic flu and the Russian flu. And let us not forget smallpox, which was one of the absolute worst pandemics we ever had. It had a 20% fatality rate and killed an estimated 300 to 500 million people before it was eradicated in 1977. So these are the diseases, the epidemics that most people know about and fear because except for smallpox, we continue to have outbreaks of them throughout the world. However, there's another epidemic that no one realizes and pretty much no one fears, but it's growing and intensifying and yes, it can be deadly. In June of 2019, the World Health Organization released a report that everyone suspected but probably didn't believe and certainly dreaded. Every day, according to WHO, more than 1 million people are infected with a sexually transmitted disease. In 2016, WHO estimated that there were 376 million new infections with one of four people having a sexually transmitted infection. One in four, either chlamydia, gonorrhea, syphilis, or trichomoniasis. More than 500 million people are living with genital HSV, herpes infection, and an estimated 300 million women have an HPV infection, the primary cause of cervical cancer, and an estimated 240 million people are living with chronic hepatitis B globally. Additionally, 988,000 pregnant women were infected with syphilis in 2016, resulting in over 350,000 adverse birth outcomes, including 200,000 stillbirths and newborn deaths. More than 30 different bacteria, viruses, and parasites, and yes, I said parasites, are known to be transmitted through sexual contact. Eight of these pathogens are linked to the greatest incidence of sexually transmitted disease. Of these eight infections, four are currently curable, syphilis, gonorrhea, chlamydia, and trichomoniasis. The other four are viral infections, which are incurable, hepatitis B, herpes simplex, HIV, and HPV. But yes, symptoms or disease due to the incurable viral infections can be reduced or modified through treatment. However, some types are drug resistant and treatment is proving less effective than in the past. And of course, that brings us to HIV and the AIDS pandemic, which seemed to peak around 2005 through 2012. The human immunodeficiency virus and acquired immunodeficiency syndrome is most certainly a global health crisis that impacts the lives of millions of people a year. Around 37 million people are living with HIV and AIDS. That's nearly the entire population of Canada. And in total around the world, it's killed 36 million people since 1981. 
AIDS was first identified in the Democratic Republic of the Congo in 1976, and it spread shortly thereafter and has proven itself as a global pandemic, killing more than 36 million people. And again, there are close to 37 million people living with HIV today. Luckily, with new treatments available, HIV is far more manageable, and the annual global deaths from HIV and AIDS has dropped to about one and a half million per year. There's no overstating the fact that many epidemics come and go, but STDs seem to be here to stay, and they contribute to morbidity and mortality as much, if not more, than any other pandemic. Our concern for sexually transmitted diseases is real. For millions, it is a life or death situation, and for hundreds of millions, it's a devastating quality of life issue. So, what can we do? Well, in all situations, a monogamous relationship with a trusted spouse or partner is the best guarantee for a life free from the scourges of the STD epidemic. Comprehensive sexual education, safe sex practices, STD and HIV testing, and behavior modification and counseling are also primary prevention strategies. In addition, education to help improve people's abilities to recognize the symptoms of STDs and to increase the likelihood that they will seek medical care or encourage a sexual partner to do so also helps. Unfortunately, globally, there is a lack of public awareness and in addition, people are impulsive and too often reckless about sex and that sets the stage for rampant transmission of STDs. Hey, be well be safe, think. If you remember anything, remember that every day, more than 1 million people are infected with STDs. Use your head and may God bless. <laughs>